Grade 4 Math, number 73, Fractions and Properties of Addition. The commutative property of addition and the associative property of addition can help us group and order add-ends to add them easier. So remember an add-end is what you add together to get a sum. These are the add-ends right here, okay? And then the 4 is the sum. Remember that the top is the numerator and the bottom is the denominator. And let's talk about the commutative property. The commutative property of addition says when the order of two add-ins change, the sum stays the same. So think of it like this. If this is your home, and here's a coffee house that you like to stop at to get coffee, and then here's work or school, if you go from home the two miles to the coffee house and stop, and then go the three miles to work, it's going to be five miles to get to work. When you come home from work and you stop at the coffee house and then stop home, it's still five miles. Two plus three is five and three plus two is five. So the commute, commutative property of addition is like commuting to work and home or school and home. It doesn't matter whether you're commuting to work or to home the commute is the same distance. It's still five miles either way you commute. Okay, that's the commute, commutative property. Think of commuting, okay? People talk about what's your commute to get to work or not and say, oh, it's a half an hour. So commuting is like going back and forth and it doesn't matter which direction you're going to work or to home, it's still going to be a five mile distance, see? Okay, well, the associative property property of addition says when the group of add-ins are changed the sum is the same. So think, there's three friends 12 year old, a 15 year old, and an 18 year old. Maybe they're siblings. When you add the 12 year old to the 15 year old you get 27. Then you add the 18 year old's age and we get 45 years old. Total. Okay, 45 years total. If we grouped the 15 year old to the 18 year old it's still going to equal 45 total years, okay? That's 33 and 12 is still going to be 45. So it doesn't matter which friends or associates we add first, the sum is the same. So when you want to remember the associative property, think of the associates that you go to school or work with, who you associate with, who you hang out with. It doesn't matter if you group the two girls and then add the guy's age, or if you group the guy and the girl and then add the other girl's age, it's still going to equal the same no matter who you associate together first, okay? So those are the two properties that are going to help us. They're going to help us group and order the add-ins, okay? So we got to think to ourselves, add the fractions to rename and regroup whole numbers. So if we saw this one, 2 and 3 fifths plus 1 and 2 fifths, it's in parentheses, but are these good parentheses to help us? Or would it be better to group them in a different way? No, actually these parentheses can help us. If you look at the 3 fifths and the 2 fifths, and if we added them together, we would get one whole. We would get 5 fifths. See? We would have 2 plus this 1, and then plus these two together, make five-fifths, which is one whole, right? Plus another one and five, one and one-fifth. So we'd have two, three, four, five, and one-fifth. So it was kind of good that these were grouped together because these two fractions helped us get a whole number, see? How about this one? We've got seven and three-tenths plus five and five-tenths plus two and five-tenths. Is it helpful to have the 7 and 3 tenths grouped with the 5 and 5 tenths? Actually, in this case, wouldn't it be better if we group the two 5 tenths together to get a 10 tenth? Yeah, it would. Associative property. We're going to group these two guys together because even for mental math, they're going to help us answer the problem. 5, 6, 7, and 8 plus 7 and 3 tenths gets us 7 plus 8 is 15 and we move the 3 tenths over. See? 
Here's another one. 3 and 4 tenths plus 5 and 2 tenths plus 6 tenths. Are they grouped the best way? Actually, it would be better if we added these two together, wouldn't it? Because the 6 tenths and the 4 tenths is going to make a 10 tenth. See? Then we've got our 3, and then we've got our 5 and 2 tenths. So that's 3, 4, plus 5 is 9, and 2 tenths. See? How about here? Are they grouped the best way possible? We have a 12 and 4 ninths, but we have a 3 and 5 ninths over here. If we added these two together, wouldn't we get a 9 ninths? Yeah. So now we've got 12, and we've got 3, and 1, plus 1 more, plus the 2 ninths. So we've got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 2 ninths. See? Sorry about that, cutting off that on the bottom. We had 12 and the 9 ninths that these two made. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 2 ninths. Okay, i got to hurry up. My battery's getting low. We've got 12 and a half plus 4, and we have a half out here. If we add these two together, we'll have two halves, which is one whole. Okay, then we've got 12 and 4. That's 16, and this other one whole is 17. So we end up with a whole 17. Okay, let's look at this one. Are they grouped together well? Actually, this fraction added to that fraction would be the best, because then we'd have a 7 seventh. See that? Then we've got 1, and we've got 3, and we've got 1 seventh, and we've got 4. And we can add them all up. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 4 is 9, and 1 seventh. See? So it doesn't matter what order we add these in. Add them in the order that's going to be the easiest for your head. Look at this one. 7 and 3 eighths plus 1 and 5 eighths plus 2 and 4 eighths. Wouldn't it be better if the parentheses were this way? Because then we could make this one whole of 8 eighths. So now we got a 7. We got an 8 eighths plus a 1 right here. And then plus 2 and 4 eighths. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 4 eighths. And the 4 eighths can be reduced. The 4 can be divided by 2, and the 8 can be divided by 2. And we get 11, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Look, we can do it again. Now, what would have happened if I had divided this by 4 instead of 2? We would have saved ourselves some trouble, wouldn't we? That's why we want to do the greatest common factor when we're reducing. If we had divided each side by 4 instead of the 2, we would have immediately gone to 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. It gives us 11 and a half. So grouping the fractions in the smartest way is going to help you when you're adding them, okay? Because you remember when the numerator and the denominator are the same, it gives you one whole. That helps you add them, doesn't it? Remember commutative property. It doesn't matter if you're going to work or home. It's the same distance. And remember, associative property says it doesn't matter which two friends you group together first. They're all going to equal the same thing in the end. Okay? That is fractions and the properties of addition. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you next video. Bye.